Paul from Blues Creek Guitars. We're going to be making some pick guards today. You can see I have some patterns. I have SB12 System 3 Epoxy. There is my hardener, that's my resin. I'm going to be using trans tint colors. Uh, the three colors that I'm going to be using are right here, golden brown, reddish brown, dark brown. So I'm going to take three drops, three drops in here, one, two, three, one there. Okay, now I'm going to be using a straw to stir. Now this is really not that hard to do, believe it or not. And I'm mixing the colors first like this because I have about 25 minutes of, of open time with this. The other thing you're going to notice is I have a torch. The torch, believe it or not, is going to be used when we start mixing this stuff up to actually de-bubble, to get the bubbles out of the epoxy. So, to recap, resin, hardener, color, color, three drops, golden brown. I'm done with the golden brown. Now, when I first put this on my pattern, you're going to see it's not all that dark. So you can see I'm just gently mixing this up. Now, I'm going to be adding the hardener. Now, I don't want to get as much as, I've got to get us all out. And what I will do here is I'm going to splash some back in, going to go in and going to go out. I want to get all of this mixed as well as I can. The instructions say to vigorously stir for 30 seconds. I'm going to stir a little bit longer. I just want to get as much of this as I can. And you want to see I'm being very cognizant of getting my color. You can see I get this nice color going on. Now, I'm going to gently put a little coat on here. And this is my base color. You can't appreciate this until you see how all the colors are as they layer up. And that's the neat part. See, I'm smearing this out. You can't see very well, but there's bubbles in here, but they'll be gone. So I'm just giving it a nice thin splotch. We, we don't have to be very neat and precise with this. This is not that kind of a process. Now I'm going to get some red. Now the red, I only need two drops. Actually I need three, I forgot. I need to add four the hardener. Now I'm gently going to stir this up. And this makes a, a very, very red color. And we don't need a lot of that, but we do need this to kind of help go along with what we're doing. So you can see the, you can see the color starting to take effect here. And I'm just dabble. You notice I'm not doing anything. It's all random. I'm just smearing. This, this is great because you don't have to be neat. So you can see I'm just putting this little bit of red in here. And this mix that I'm doing is enough for three pick guards. All right, now I'm getting a good smear. I'm going to try to bevel this off a little bit, or I shouldn't say bevel, but I'm trying to cover my pattern good. Done with that one. Well, now we go with the dark mission brown. Again, three drops. I think I got four, but I don't think anybody's going to sue me over that. Start smearing. And now I'm going to start mixing this in. And this is where the magic happens, because we have these colors going. You see that, how the colors are. And now I'm going to fill the pattern up right now. And I want to get this colors blended together the best I can. So 
So you see how I'm working around on the pattern? I'm getting the pattern covered. Now, the first time I did this, uh, by the way, I'm using Corian for my patterns. You can use ultra weight molecular, yeah, all, you ultra high molecular weight nylon. So you can use a lot of stuff with this. But you see how I'm kind of putting a drop and then smearing it? So you can see how that's starting to look like a tortoise pick guard. And I'm not being, you, you drop it and swirl it, drop it and swirl it. See that? And once, the more you do this, and the more comfortable you get with it, the neater your, your patterns get. Now you don't have to be real, uh, what do I want to say? I don't want to say you don't have to be real precise. There's nothing to it. It's a randomness. But you see how that's just swirling in there? See that? Now you notice I have aluminum foil down. And there'll be a reason for that because if I used wax paper, <laughs> when we use the torching process, uh, that really doesn't go too good with fire. So, I'm looking at my pattern, and I'm looking at, I'm filled, all right? I have a nice flow on there. But you see the nice little, I don't want to call it a pattern that I've developed, but how I have this stuff happening inside the pick guard, all right? To be honest with you, I'm kind of happy with that. There we go. Just another drop or two. But you see how those three colors, they give you a depth in the pattern. Now comes the fun. What? I don't know if you'll be able to see in detail, but the bubbles come up. And I just do this back and forth in a little bit until I don't see any more bubbles. I'm good with that. Now I'm going to cover this with a piece of cardboard. This will keep any dust from coming on it. And that's it. I'll look at this tomorrow and see how the end result comes. So from my shop to yours, you'll see final pictures tomorrow. Okay, well, good morning. It's the morning after, and I'm taking the uh, pickguards off. Now, this one, I used wax paper as a mold release agent. And I'm gonna show you, when I tried to do these before, I had some issues. So what I did find is you have to make sure that all of your ends are clean before you try to separate them. All right, so I'm gonna to go to the belt sander over here quick and clean all of the over mold. Okay, you can hear that didn't take too long. Now what I'm gonna do is I have a razor blade, I have a pallet knife, and a, uh, an icing knife actually from uh, Pampered Chef. So I get my, this here is treated with mineral oil. So I'm just gonna get my, work my knife gently in under, not knife, but my uh, razor blade underneath here. And you can't rush it. I can see where it's lifting gently. And I'm just gently separating it and I'm not forcing it but you can see how this is working I don't know if you can see how it's separating in underneath here and I'm just gently working it and there we go and what this does the razor blade is cutting at the joint here let me come back here I can just get underneath it this way there we go 
And as I do that, I can actually see this lifting off of my pattern. Put this back underneath here. There we go. And I'm just gently, I'm not being too forceful with it. I'm just gently kind of working this underneath that joint. All right, there we go. And I'm, I can just watch it on the inside here, separating wider and wider. There we go. And now, there's another pick guard. This one was treated with wax. So we have wax paper. I actually, to be honest with you, used a double stick adhesive on here. That one was just good old fashioned mineral oil. And all I did is kind of wiped it and cleaned the pattern off really, really well. This one was wax. So let's see how this one works. And I'm just, yeah, it looks like it's gonna come off. So all of those, all of those uh, release agents work very, very well. My first attempt, I didn't use anything. And obviously that's why I'm using uh, the agent. Now apparently I can tell you just from what I can feel, the wax was absolutely the easiest one to peel off. That one is coming off so easy. Look at that. So there you have it. I have three nice pick guards. All right. So we got three new pick guards into the world. So from my shop to yours. And by the way, please like us, subscribe. That's what supports us to continue doing this.